Today we are going to discuss gradient divergence and curl in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. So first, let us start with gradient. Okay. I repeat, we are going to discuss gradient divergence and curl in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. So let us start with gradient. Okay. So <clears throat> exercise one, derive an expression derive an expression for gradient of phi in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. I repeat, derive an expression for gradient of phi in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. Okay, solution. Let gradient of phi be equal to F1 E1 hat plus F2 E2 hat plus F3 E3 hat. So I have I have an orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system then E1 hat, E2 hat, and E3 hat are the three unit vectors along the uh, coordinate curves and F1, F2, F3 are to be determined. F1, F2, F3 are to be determined. Okay, so <clears throat> then we also know that since the R vector, the R vector, this is a small displacement vector. R is a function of the three curvilinear coordinates, U1, U2, U3. I repeat, position vector is a function of the three curvilinear coordinates, u1, u2, u3. Therefore, the small displacement vector should be equal to do r by do u1, du1, plus do r by do u2, du2, plus do r by del u3, du3. And we already know that dou r by dou u1 is nothing but the scale vector h1 times the unit vector e1 unit vector along u1. So this dou r by dou u1 is equal to h1 e1, and we have the u1. Similarly, this would be h2 e2 du2, and this would be h3. E3, <clears throat> du3, okay? So since dr is, is equal to this, we have, we have d5. We have, I repeat, since dr is equal to this, we have d5 is equal to gradient of phi dot dr. This is d phi is equal to gradient of phi dot dr. This is the definition. Oh. This is equal to d phi is equal to, we have uh, del phi is here. Del phi is given by this. dr is given by this. So if I take the dot product of this, so let me call it equation number one. Let me call it equation number two. So uh, this is gradient phi. Gradient phi is given by equation one. Then dr is given by equation two. So I sub substitute <coughs> gradient phi from equation one and dr from equation two, and I take their dot product. 
And if, what do I get? I get this is equal to F1 E1 dot H1 E1 D1. So I should get H1 F1 D1. And if E1 dot E1 is one, E1 dot E2 is zero, E1 dot E3 is zero. Plus, <clears throat> similarly for this, we, we should get H2 F2 D U2. Plus for this, we should get H3 F3 D U3. This is equation number three. Equation number three. <clears throat> okay, this is one way of ex expressing D5. And then we can also express D5 in another form. How is that possible? We know that phi, this phi is a scalar field. And since this phi is a scalar field, phi, phi can also be expressed as functions of u1, u2, and u3. So phi can also be expressed as functions of function of u1, u2, and u3. So that means d phi, that means d phi equal to del phi by del u1, d u1 plus del phi by del u2 du2 plus del phi by del u3 du3. So d phi can also be expressed in this form because d phi is a function of u1, u2, and u3. Okay, so this is equation number four. This is the total differential of d phi, sorry, sorry, phi. So d, d phi should be equal to this, and also d phi is given by this uh, dot product. So from equation one and two, we get this. Now you compare equation three and four. Okay, you compare equations three and four. So equating, equating three and four. What do we get? <clears throat> now you equate three and four. So du1, du2, du3. Here, here we have du1, du2, du3. And since du1, du2, du3, they are uh, linearly independent, their coefficients should be equal. So h1, f1 should be equal to, h1, f1 should be equal to del phi by del u1. So that means h1, f1 is equal to del phi by del u1. This implies, F1 is equal to one by H1 del phi by del U1, okay? Next, let us compare the coefficient of the U2 from three and from equation four. So we have H2, H2, F2 is equal to del phi by del U2. This implies F2 equal to one by Sorry, this is not U2, this is U1. U2, this is U1. <clears throat> F2 would be one by H2, del phi by del U2. This is del U1. <clears throat> Similarly, H3, F3 equal to del phi by del U3. This implies F3 equal to one by H3 del phi by del U3. So now we have, <clears throat> we have determined the values of <clears throat> F1, F2, and F3. Now we can substitute these values of F1, F2, and F3 in equation number one. So when we substitute the values of F1, F2, and F3 in equation number one, we get the expression for gradient phi in the curvilinear coordinates. So we get, <clears throat> so thus we get thus substituting these values of F1, F2, and F3 in equation number one, we get gradient phi should be equal to what is F1? One by H1. <clears throat> so it should be one by H1 del phi by del U1 E1 plus one by 
H2, del phi by del U2, E2, plus one by H3, del phi by del U3, E3. There you go, this is fine. Okay. <clears throat> So <clears throat> gradient phi is given by this expression. <clears throat> if I take the phi common from these three expressions, then that indicates the operator equivalence of del. So <clears throat> the operator equivalence, so let me write it here. So from this expression, if I take phi common and consider only the ex expression for delta, del, sorry, not delta, it's del. So if I take phi common from the right, right hand side and consider the expression only for del, we get, so this indicates, this indicates the operator equivalence. <laughs> Operator equivalence. The del operator is equivalent to this E1 by H1. We can write E1 here. E1 by H1 del by del U1 plus <coughs> by H2, which is H1, del by del U2 plus E3 by E3 by H3, H3 del by del U3. So <clears throat> this is the operator equivalence of del in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. In rectangular coordinates, there is in Cartesian coordinates, H1 is one, H2 is also one, H3 is also one. And U1 will be X, U2 will be Y, U3 will be Z. So this reduces to the usual expression for the operator del in rectangular coordinates. Okay, when we substitute H1 equal to one, H2 equal to one, H3 equal to one, it reduces to the usual expression for the operator del in rectangular coordinates. Okay, so, so this is the expression for the gradient of a scalar field in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. So this is the expression for the gradient of a scalar field in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. <clears throat> Similarly, we can obtain the expression for gradient, sorry, divergence as well as curl in orthogonal curvilinear co coordinates. So let me give you the formula right away. There is <clears throat> divergence, divergence of a vector field. Divergence of a vector field in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. Divergence of a vector field in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. This is given by one by H1, H2, H3. One by H1, H2, H3. Del by del U1, A1, H2, H3. Plus del by uh, <clears throat> del by del U2, E2, H3, H1, plus del by del U3, E3, H1, H2. So this is the expression for the divergence of a vector field 
in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. Similarly, we can also express curl. Similarly, we can also express the curl of a vector field in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. This is one by h1, h2, h3. Then we take the determinant of the matrix h1, e1, h2, e2, h3, e3. del by del u1 del by del u2 del by del u3 a1 h1 a2 h2 a3 h3 it is this <clears throat> Okay, so this is the exp expression for curl of a vector field A in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. When I expand this determinant, we should get a term like this. This should be equal to E1 by H2, H3, E1 by H2, H3, del by del U2, A3, H3 minus del by, sorry, do by do U3, A2, H2. Plus E2 by, H3, H1. So del by del U3, A1, H1 minus del by del U1, A3, H3. Plus, plus <clears throat> E3 by H1, H2, del by del U1, A2, H2 minus del by del U2, A1, H1. <clears throat> this is the expression for curl of a vector field in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. Okay, then we have another expression that is, <clears throat> if we take the, <clears throat> the divergence, so if I take the divergence, divergence of gradient, gradient of some scalar field psi, so first you take the gradient, then you take the divergence. divergence. So the divergence of the gradient of psi, this is represented by del square psi. Psi is a scalar field, del square psi. This del square operator, this is called the Laplacian operator. This del square operator, it is also called the Laplacian operator, Laplacian. This is Laplacian of psi, okay? And in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates, this Laplacian of psi, it is equal to one by H1, H2, H3, didn't break it, del by del U1, H2, H3 by, H1 del psi by del U1. Okay. 
plus del y del u2 within bracket h3 h1 divided by h2 del psi by del u2 okay plus del y del u3 h1 h2 by h3 del psi by sorry do psi by do u3 This is, if you have u1 here, then you have h2, h3 by h1 here. This is do u1, do, sorry, do psi by do u1. If you have u2 here, you have h3, h1, and h2 here. Do psi by do u2. If you have u3 here, then this is h1, h2 by h3, do psi by do u3. So this is the expression for Laplacian of a scalar field psi. And uh, you are going to use this expression many times during your undergraduate course, as well as your master's course. <clears throat> so these are the expressions for divergence, curl, and then the Laplacian. Okay. Okay, now, uh, let us express the gradient, divergence, curl, and Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. So let us do it one by one. So ex exercise. Exercise. Exercise is express in cylindrical coordinates, in cylindrical coordinates, the quantities, the quantities, number A, number A, the gradient of phi. Okay, comma, B, the divergence of the vector field A. Phi is a scalar field, A is a vector field, number C the curl of A, curl of the vector field A, number D the Laplacian, Laplacian of the scalar field Phi. Express these four quantities in cylindrical coordinates. So cylindrical coordinate system is an orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system, okay? So solution for cylindrical coordinates for cylindrical coordinates what are the cylindrical coordinates the cylindrical coordinates are rho phi and r so sorry sorry this is not r this is z so, so this is z so for cylindrical coordinates, rho, phi, and z, what is the first co coordinate? The first coordinate u1 is rho, u2 is phi, u3 is z. Then the unit vector along u1, that is e1. e1, this is nothing but E rho, this is the unit vector along rho. Similarly, the unit vector along the second co coordinate, this is E phi. Similarly, the unit vector along the third coordinate curve, this is E z, and what? E z, E z, and E z is equal to the k hat, k hat vector in Cartesian coordinates. <clears throat> e z ka k hat ka samani ka. Similarly, what are the scale factors? The scale factors, the scale factor corresponding to the first coordinate h1 is nothing but h rho and h rho is equal to one. Similarly, <clears throat> h2, h2 is h phi and h phi is equal to rho. 
and h3, h3 is equal to hz, and this is equal to one. Okay. <clears throat> so h1 is one, h2 is row, h3 is also one. There you go. So n. Okay. <clears throat> And so let us start with A. What is A? A is gradient of phi. Gradient of phi. So let us calculate gradient of phi for the cylindrical coordinates. We know that the formula for gradient of phi is one by H1, del phi by del U1, E1 head, plus one by H2, del phi by del u2 e2 hat plus 1 by h3 del phi by del u3 e3 hat okay and this is equal to 1 by h1 what is h1 h1 is 1 so 1 by 1 del del phi by del u1 what is u1 u1 is rho so this will be del phi by del rho del phi by del rho and what is E1? E1, we have known that it is E rho. So this is E rho, E rho. Plus, what is H2? H2 is rho. So this is one by rho, del phi. So uh, let me write it as capital phi, so that I don't distinct, uh, I, I don't confuse it with the angle phi, del phi. So here, capital phi, Capital phi is the scalar field. So capital phi is the scalar field. Small phi is the angle, okay? Capital phi is the scalar field, small phi is the angle. So here, this capital phi is the scalar field and small phi is the angle, E phi. Plus H3, H3 here we have learned that it is equal to one. So this is one by one, del phi by, del z, e z, okay? So this is one by one is nothing but one. So this is del phi by del rho, e rho, plus one by rho, del capital phi, the scalar field with respect to the angle phi, e phi, plus del phi, the scalar field with respect to z, e z. So this is the expression for gradient of the scalar field phi in terms of the cylindrical curvilinear coordinates. Okay, that is fine. Okay, now let us uh, calculate number B, that is the divergence of A. So let us calculate divergence of A, sorry, divergence of a vector field A. So B. This is divergence of vector field A. And we know that from the formula, this is equal to one by H1, H2, H3. This formula, the formula which we, we have written a few minutes back. This is the formula for divergence of A. So let us apply this. One by H1, H2, H3, del by del U1, H2, H3, A1 plus del by del U2, H3, H1, A2 plus del by del U3, do by do U3, H1, H2, A3. Okay, then H1 is one for cylindrical coordinates, H1 is one, H2 is rho, H3 is one. So this is nothing but one by rho, one by rho. Del by del u one, this is del by del rho, del by del, do by do rho. <clears throat> H2 is rho, H3 is one. So this is rho times E1. Plus U2, U2 is phi. So this is do by do phi. H3 is one, H1 is one. 
Okay, so this is so uh, here I I also have to mention that a one the a one component is the a row component a row com component and a two a two component is the a five component so this is the a five component plus do by u u three is do by do z h one is one h two is row so this is row a z. Okay, here let me explain the components of A here. Let me explain the components of A. Here, where A vector is equal to A row, B row, plus A phi, E phi plus a z e z okay here <clears throat> the vector field a is expressed in terms of the unit vectors along rho phi and z okay 